On the occasion of a new opening on the Palatine Hill, we can ask today, what was the Domus Tiberiana? This massive palatial structure attributed to the Emperor Tiberius, the successor of Augustus. Now we get access to portions of this palace that were not opened for 50 years. From the position on the Roman Forum, it's the Domus Tiberiana Palace that we see dominating the landscape. And now we're getting access to it. When we look at the top of the Palatine Hill, we can see this area delineated approximately 150 by 120 meters attributed to being the domicile of the Emperor Tiberius. And it's overlooking and distinct from the pre-existing sanctuary of Republican deities Victoria and Magna Mater. So somewhere on that large terrace space, you have the first house of Tiberius, the stepson of Augustus, who already had his own house on the Palatine Hill. But so much of that palace attributed to Tiberius is obscured by the Renaissance Farnese Gardens that we see here, the fountains, and even the plantings on top of this massive terraced area. Few things remain on top. An exception is this fish pond. And when we look at the majority of the archaeological evidence around this area delineated as the palace of Tiberius, the structures are actually much later. The earlier structures don't date to the time of Tiberius that we find in this platform. Rather, they're attributed to Caligula, the house of Gaius, that we know is attached to the house of Tiberius originally in this location. Subsequently, that house is going to be destroyed, as is the memory of Caligula. But what comes in next that we have well preserved is this 130 meter long cryptoporticus, this underground passageway that's attached to the platform, and it dates the time of Nero. This is Nero who's going to have his Domus Trecentatoria, Nero who will finally make the definitive Domus Aurea, extending here from the Palatine Hill over to the Esquiline. After the fire of 80, it's Domitian's turn to have his hand in this palatial area, and he's going to make a ramp and other structures leading down to the Palatine Hill, giving a new definitive approach to the Domus Tibidiana. And finally, it's Hadrian that extends the platform forward over the Clevis Vittorii that now we can have access to and extending over toward the Via Nova Street. And that's the portion with these substructures that we're now going to access. How can we get up to the Domus Tiberiana today? Let's ascend a portion of the ramp built by Domitian. Again, built in coordination with that idea of giving access to the palace. Now Domitian's going to have his own palace but in this case, the ramp gives direct access to the Domus Tibidiana. Now, this ramp has only been open for a number of years, but it gives us an incredible insight into the connection to the lower palace built by Domitian, which is now Santa Maria Antiqua Church. And we're ascending, we can imagine ourselves being a guest, someone of privilege, zigzagging our way up immediately from the Forum to the Domus Tibidiana. And now, with the new opening of the Domus Tibidiana, we can turn right, and we're going to go right on to the so-called Clevis Vittoriae, and we're now beneath those extended substructures built by Hadrian. So pretty much everything we see here is Hadrianic, and it simply is an extension of the terrace up on top on the Palatine Hill, extending it forward, and it is just magnificent. So you can visit on the top and now you can visit down below and it's within some of these rooms these are going to be utilitarian spaces this is not going to be the private apartments of the emperor that he was on top it's in these rooms that we now have museum spaces that tell us the history of the Domus Tibidiana so an image like this these materials out of terracotta the terracotta plaques the drainage spouts these are going to be attributed to republican houses 
that are ultimately obliterated by the construction of the Domus Davidiana. Here are a series of loom weights. You can even reconstruct it here. So there's all kinds of household activities taking place in the homes of the Republican period. Here is a nice rendition of the Palatine Hill in the time of Augustus. There's his house. There's the Temple of Apollo. But the rest of it was houses like this. This is known today as the House of Augustus, but it actually is a house bought by Augustus and then buried, and his house was placed on top. And we have extraordinary frescoes preserved. We're also going to see a series of frescoes preserved in the Domus Dibidiana that are contemporary with these buildings and these substructures dating to the time of Hadrian. So when we peer through this little keyhole, we can see this beautiful Hadrianic fresco of leaves, flowers, and a bird. Here is something a little more simply rendered in the fourth style. Again, a lot of these spaces are utilitarian. And we have a series of frescoes that we can't get access to, but do exist on some of the substructures. We can zoom in here to see a portion of it. So there are lots of frescoes that adorn the Hadrianic levels of the Domus Tibidiana. So there again, we have the Republican temples. And here again, we have a new rendition of the elevation of the Domus Tibidiana. There are other ideas because nothing is definitive. But what's found in the excavation are statues. What's found in the excavation are going to be black and white mosaics still left in situ and other fragments of statues, but tons of examples of the beautiful colored and white marbles that adorned the private and public spaces of the Domus Tibidiana up above. What an incredible museum space at the same time looking down at the house of the Vestal Virgins. This portion of Opus Sectile is in the Palatine Museum above and so is this, but they're both attributed to the Domus Tibidiana. How extraordinary it was in the time of Domitian and the time of Hadrian and the use of colored and white marbles. It was something spectacular, alabasters, serpentino porphyry and so on all on display we also have examples of the commonware the cookware we get some insight into the slaves that would have been here and managed this household and would feed the people that were coming to the banquets of the emperors we also get signs of daily life like dice we also get signs of daily life with countless amphorae that were used through the centuries as well as a great assortment of oil lamps that help us date the goings-on in the Palace of Domitian over the centuries. Besides these substructures, we can walk around to a number of terraces to appreciate the views of the Domus Tibidiana, and we can understand better the various stories that make up the Domus Tibidiana on many levels. And it really is a place worth getting to know we have this great connection then down to the forum below we have the piano nobile the royal floor above us and down below we have this tight connection with the via nova with the house of the vestal virgins coliseums in the distance it truly is extraordinary religion is a big part as well in the domus tibidiana this is an alabaster tiger probably originally ridden by a statue of Bacchus or Dionysus. We also have here this idicule, which depicts Hippocrates, the Egyptian god. Here's a marble satyr, again, a companion of Dionysus, the god of wine. Obviously an important cult figure here. Here's a kista, maybe holding sacred implements, and it is made of marble, but depicts something made of wicker. This is an oil lamp. There's a whole series of these dating to the Severan period, and it depicts Isis breastfeeding baby Hippocrates next to the god Serapis. Isis is also present in marble reliefs. So we think about the importance or the prominence of this deity. We also have with Cates and Catopates, the cult of Mithras present in the Domus Tibidiana. So this is an extraordinary site this is an incredible palace, and now it's accessible. And keep in mind that the palace 
was a papal possession from the 5th to the 8th centuries. And in particular, Pope John VII actually lived in the Domus Tibidiana in the 8th century. Such an incredible location, the Domus Tibidiana. We hope you liked it. We hope you like Ancient Rome Live and you subscribe, hit the like button. And of course, we offer free lectures all the time. Subscribe to our news channel and we'll see you somewhere in Rome or the Roman Empire.